So as you step down into the shop, you're confronted by Molly, the guard dog. And a few How other folks. You? Hello guys. Hi. How are things? Oh, it's just about it. It's uh, nice and cold outside. It's lovely and cold, isn't it? I thought I've already been to the five pound container <laughs> and you've got another five pounds out of me. You can't help yourself. This is Rich, he's the e-commerce manager. And this is Jan, she's in charge. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, this is the shop. So let's have a quick look around. Now I'll do a 360 for you. Much bigger than it seems. And unlike most army surplus stores where you're having to dig through bins and bins of stuff to find what you need, everything in here is laid out properly. Everything, you can find everything. So if I said to you, Rich, where are the boots? Where are they? Right behind you, Richard. Where are the waterproof jackets? <laughs> On that wall. Where are the bivvy bags? We don't have any. Ah, there we go then. <laughs> <laughs> but he knew where they were. <laughs> so something they started doing last year was a five pound container. So all items in this container, five pounds each. No refunds, no exchanges. And it's sort of a clearing house for the stuff that they don't uh, they either have only got one or two lines left of, or they've uh, got minor defects. And some of the stuff you get through here is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> so, Rich, you've got an innovation here you want to tell us about? Yeah, it's something that we've we've been playing with really for the last three months, and it's really sort of being honed now. Um, it's the Army Recruit Pack. Uh, so, not really surplus, all brand new stuff, but but decent stuff. So, basically, we've put these packs together to satisfy the kit list that new army recruits get so when they get the offer letter they get a list of stuff they have to buy and, and generally their mums or dads or, or both spend hours and hours trying to find everything so we, we've put it all into one box which has gone down really well with our customers so in there they've got things like um, they've got some dry bags that we've got in there from carry more a nice little head torch with a, with a red light on it uh, 20 wooden hangers Nice little black watch from Casio. So look at the watch there, that's kind of... So that's quite a nice touch, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's... They, we've spoken a lot to, to Army Jobs and the Army Careers guys and, and really try to get stuff that's going to do the job because, you know, they don't. we don't want it to be too expensive, um, but also they don't want to go out on their first sort of assault course and, and knacker their watch because it's like watering or, or the face is smashed that's why we went for one with the bars um, uh, yeah and then this bag we've got full of boot polishing stuff so kiwi polish 20 foot of paracord because you never never know what you might need paracord for polishing cloths boot brushes this isn't on the list but a lot of the um, the guys at the recruitment centers have said that that the the, uh, the crows as they as they call them the combat recruits of war um, need this decent camo paint, face paint so we, we put that in there as well um, combination padlock so everything that they need uh, and more so it looks like a hell of a lot of research has gone into this um, I'm just looking down through there now what have you got so you got it's tent pegs and trouser twists at the bottom there and padlocks oh I see yep down there okay and then that's a, a 90 litre rucksack liner so keep it yeah a lot of the time um, people have been buying the freezer bags you know the ziploc freezer bags but you, you'll go through them at a rate of knots so what we've done is we've, we've, we've got some caramel sf dry bags in so these are the bergen side pocket liners so even after they've done their 12 weeks basic training they've then got basically two side pocket liners and a bergen liner for when they when they're through to to regular so it sounds like you've been using your experience selling army surplus. You see how the kit comes back after 10 years of service, so you know what they need from the start. You, because the gear gets modified, they don't always keep it as issue, do they? No. The, every every squad has got is a well, it's like like ourselves really. You, you've all got your, your your preferred way of using stuff and, and tailoring stuff, and you do see a lot of tailoring going on. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, you highlighted the point there. You see, we see stuff after ten years worth of use, and and that's that's part and parcel of our service. Really, it's built to last. Um, I mean, if we're selling it on ten years after it's, after it's first been issued, and it still could last another five or six or ten years, 
Um, and we've tried to follow that through really in the kit that we're putting together for the army recruits. So something that's not just going to last them basic training, but they can take it on then. So what sort of feedback have you had from, about the ARPs? All been really positive. We've, had, we've spoken to parents of, of guys that are in the army already that said they wished that it had been around when they, um, their kids had signed up. Uh, new recruits have, have been really, really enthusiastic because it takes the pressure off. They know that they can buy it, and it's all in one box, and we send out. Um, and the the careers officers have been been really good. In fact, a lot of them have asked uh, have asked for us to take a kit to them so that they can show it when they do the oaths. They can say, right, this is your kit list, and this is the sort of thing that you're going to be needing. Uh, and I'm also in talks now with the the army training centres as well. The, the actual each army training centre has a slight variation of what they need. Um, so if we can get a good relationship with the army training centres, then when they modify what they want in the kit list, we can react quicker so that new recruits definitely get exactly what each respective training centre needs. Having said that we haven't got any bivy bags, that, that's not strictly true. We've only got a small amount of bivy bags. Um, so it's the, the standard British army bivy bag is about nine foot long, four feet across, about sort of chest height tapers on the way down to the foot. Um, we're, we're selling these, depending on grade and condition, between £16 and £35. Um, Gore-Tex, breathable, draw, simple drawstring um, clothes. The, the 9-foot gives you plenty of room so you can put your gear in there as well. Um, what I tend to do is stick my rucksack above my head and pull it over the top so it holds it off the face. Uh, and then within those... We can put some sleeping bags. So this is a, a Dutch bag. So a small opening there as it comes right up the centre. You have to excuse my dog whining in the background. She's uh, a bit of a diva and wants to be on camera. Um, yeah, three new three season bag, 35 quid. So this is one of the reasons I like coming here. Tucked away in the corner, you get things like this. So this is NATO standard shape and size. British Army water bottle, holds one litre, it's black so you don't get any UV degradation of any water purification you've put in there. Uh, you get this plastic cup as well, these, are, these things are really tough, I've dropped them off cliff faces, I've dropped them down <laughs> ravines, they do survive. Uh, nice folding handle there, So and you get quite a good brew in there, you can get half a litre, so that's quite a lot of hot chocolate and it all stacks together. So it fits nicely on there, and it's yeah, such a nice compact system. And these ones have a little uh, valve on the top there, and that's for the use with the uh, British Army respirator. So they've got a little tube that comes off it, so you can drink, connect it up, without uh, exposing yourself to whatever you're wearing the respirator for. So chemical, biological, radiation, those sorts of things. And these are, how much are they again, Rich? Uh, this five, uh, eight pound for, for that set. We do have some that don't have the, the respirator valve on them and they're only a fiver. Brilliant, I think I might have one of those now. So when I was on the way here, I was talking about Gore-Tex and the, I mean, this, this is, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. This has been issued, this is service stuff. This has had a lifetime, it's been issued to at least one soldier. And there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, you could, there's not much difference between that one and this brand new one that was uh, made from the same material from the same uh, same manufacturers. Yeah, one of the MOD suppliers we had them make make those jackets up for us. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And this fully waterproof Gore-Tex DPM jacket with a rollaway hood, good zips, no defects in manufacture. That's thirty pounds. So if you want to buy the lightweight super mountaineering jacket that came in this year's colours you'll be looking at least £200 for effectively the same jacket now so you've got to bear in mind what I was saying earlier about some people don't wear, want to wear DPM or if you're travelling to a country where looking like a soldier is a bad idea um, it might not be for you but for the vast majority of people this is a great way to get a really good waterproof jacket and trousers and gloves and all sorts for a bargain price. Um, I can't believe more people don't wear army surplus gear.